Hello, this is Pastor Gavin Whitcomb from Moores Mountain Church near Mechanicsburg, Pennsylvania. I want to just welcome you into my study, and uh, we're going to look at John chapter 10, verses 27 through the end of the chapter. So uh, let's pray first. Father in heaven, we come to you in Jesus' name. We thank you for the work of grace you've done in our hearts and in our lives. Lord, I need your help. Uh, without you, I can do nothing. So we pray you'd bless now the study of your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, I'm going to read from John chapter 10, verses 27 through verse 42, which is the end of the chapter. Jesus said, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father which gave them me is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. I and my Father are one. Then the Jews took up stones again to stone him. Jesus answered them, Many good works have I showed you from my Father. For which of these works do ye stone me? The Jews answered him, saying, For a good work we stone thee not, but for blasphemy because that thou, being a man, makest thyself God. Jesus answered them, Is it not written in your law, I have said ye are gods? If he called them gods unto whom the word of God came, and the scripture cannot be broken, say ye of him whom the Father hath sanctified and sent into the world, thou blasphemest, because I said I am the Son of God? If I do not the works of my Father, believe me not. But if I do, though ye believe not me, believe the works that ye may know and believe that the Father is in me, and I in him. Therefore they sought again to take him, but he escaped out of their hand. And went away again beyond Jordan into the place where John at first baptized, and there he abode. And many resorted unto him, and said, John did no miracle, but all these things that John spake of this man were true. And many believed on him there. Now, in this passage of Scripture, Jesus was talking about how uh, he, he, he had sheep. Uh, the Jewish leaders did not believe him because they were not of his sheep. And by sheep, Jesus means his redeemed people. Those who are saved become a part of his sheep, right? Uh, he says, my sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. Uh, so one characteristic of Christ's sheep is they hear his voice, they believe what Jesus says, and they follow him. And uh, Jesus said, And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. Now in verses 27 and 28, we find both the teaching of the perseverance of the saints and of the eternal security of the believer. The perseverance of the saints means that true believers... Are distinguished from mere false super, superficial professors of faith in Christ. They're distinguished. The true are distinguished from the false because the true have this undying attachment to Christ and they persevere in the faith. In other words, they continue to believe. They continue to follow Jesus. And he says in verse 20, And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. You know, if Jesus said his sheep would never perish, they're never going to perish. And that means the old adage, once saved, always saved, is true and biblical and uh, agrees with what Jesus said. I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. So Jesus said, we as his sheep, we who believe on him, are in his hand, and nobody can pluck them out of his hand. And he says, My Father which gave them me, in other words, we've been given to the Son by the Father, basically from the foundation of the world. So, so my Father which gave them me is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. I and my Father are once. You and I who are saved, Jesus said, we will never perish. We are in Christ's hand and we are in the Father's hand. And Jesus said, I and my Father are one. Now that's, that's what we're going to focus on this morning. I and my Father 
are one. So we know that we who are saved were eternally secure because God gives us eternal life and he saves us and he keeps us. So, you know, I'm saved, but I'm not keeping myself saved. Jesus is keeping me and he gives me eternal life and I will never perish. Now, when Jesus said, I and my father are one, he was saying, hey, the father and the son are united in their work to save and to keep Christ's sheep. Okay, so they're both involved in that work of saving and keeping uh, Christ's sheep. But Jesus also affirmed that the Father and the Son are two distinct persons, but yet they are one. Okay, so um, <clears throat> I'm sure you realize that if you understand the Trinity, the Father is not the Son, right? And the Son is not the Father. There's a distinction of persons, but they are one in essence, and yet one true and living God comprised of the Father, the Son, the Spirit. Uh, one times one times one still equals one, right? So, uh, the, um, so the, the Trinity was more fully revealed to us uh, in the incarnation of Christ when he became a man. And he more fully revealed to us the, uh, the Holy Spirit. So God, the Father, and the Son, uh, they are one. They are one in essence. Uh, in other words, they are uh, God. And they are one in power. And they are one in purpose. They have the same aims, the same desires, the same will. Now, uh, the Jews recognize, hey, well, then that means, Jesus, that you're saying that you're God. You're basically saying you're equal with God, so you're claiming to be God. And that's why in verse 31 it says, Then the Jews took up stones again to stone him. See, they considered what Jesus said to be blasphemous. Uh, in fact, at the end of verse 33, he says, Hey, thou being a man, they, they said to him, Thou being a man, makest thyself God. Now, if Jesus were not God, yes, it would have been blasphemous. But Jesus is God. He is God the Son, and he is one with the Father. And uh, so, uh, notice in verse 32, Jesus answered them, Many good works have I showed you. Okay, the Jews took up stones again to stone him, because that's what they would want to do to blasphemers, right? Put them to death. Jesus answered them, Many good works have I showed you from my Father. For which of these works do ye stone me? Now, Jesus knew that they weren't stoning him for good works. But see, two reasons you would ask a question. One would be to gain information and that's not why Jesus asked the question. But another reason you would ask a question would be to make a point, right? Uh, you know, when God came into the Garden of Eden, he said, Adam, you know, where are you? Uh, did you eat of the tree of the knowledge of evil that I told you not to eat? You know, and, and uh, God knew the answer. He wanted, he was making a point, right? He wanted them to admit to it. Uh, okay, so... So Jesus said, Many good works have I showed you from my Father. For which of these works do ye stone me? So Jesus asked that to make a point. He said, Look at the works that I do. Um, you know, the works that I do prove that I am one with the Father and that the Father sent me and that I am the Son of God. Now they knew that he raised the dead, that Jesus fed the multitudes, he healed the sick, the deaf, the lame, the blind, and he confronted the forces of evil by casting out demonic entities just by his word, just by speaking them and commanding them to go out. Okay, so, so they should have looked at the works that Jesus was doing and recognized, wow, this is the power of God. And so uh, if they look at Jesus' works, then they should have listened to his words. So somebody who's evil and a blasphemer wouldn't be able to do these wondrous works of God that Jesus did. And these miracles were the, 
the sign that he was the Son of God. I mean, there are other signs, you know, that he fulfilled Old Testament prophecies about the Messiah's first coming. But these miracles were a sign that revealed who Jesus really is. So he asked him, hey, which of these works did you, uh, are you stoning me for? The works that my father sent me to do. And in verse 33, the Jews answered him, for good work we stone thee not, but for blasphemy, because that thou being a man makest thyself God. Now, they clearly understood that Jesus was claiming to be God, right? That's why they said that. You being a man, when you said, I and my father are one, you are a man, but you're making yourself out to be God. And you're not, in their point of view. Well, the scriptures reveal Jesus to be God in the flesh, the creator of the universe. You say, well, where does it say that? Well, a lot of places. In your Old Testament prophecies, it say it, but it's really clear in John's Gospel, chapter 1. He says, in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Uh, and all things were made by him. In other words, he's still talking about the Word. Uh, and without him was not anything made that was made. Now, let me ask you a question. In Genesis 1-1, in the creation narrative, who made the heaven and the earth? It says, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, right? And if you read Isaiah, like around chapter 40 through 44, there are a lot of statements about God. And in that passage of scripture, the Lord speaks and he says, I created the heaven and the earth. I alone by myself made it. So God didn't have any helper when he created the heaven and the earth. He did it by himself. So therefore, any time in the Bible where creation is attributed to somebody, that person by their very nature is God. Because God, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Well, it says that Every, everything that God made, Jesus was directly involved. By the way, the Holy Spirit was as well. Remember it says, And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And we know there's a verse in Job where it says, The Spirit of the Almighty hath created me. You know, so, um, And Jesus is the creator of the universe. In John 1.10 it says, He was in the world, and the world was made by him. And the world knew him not. And then, of course, in verse 14 of John chapter 1, he says, And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. That's who Jesus is. God, who is called the word, <clears throat> the son of God, God the son, he became flesh and dwelt among us. Now, some who deny the deity of Christ, they make the false claim. They'll say, you know, Jesus never once claimed to be God. Well, that's not true. One place he claimed... Now, now it's true that Jesus didn't run around all over the place saying, I am God, I am God, I am God, worship me. It's true he didn't run around doing that all the time. Why? Because he wasn't stupid. He was wise. He came to do the will of the Father. He had been endued with wisdom. And if he, ran in, if he would run around saying that, people wouldn't understand. And he only revealed that in certain instances, under certain circumstances, where people had a heart to either receive it, or it was, it was just the Father's will that he reveal it. He would have been walking around saying that. He would have been, uh, they would have wanted to crucify him uh, way before his time. So... He only revealed that at certain times and certain instances. But people will say, oh, he never once claimed to be God. Well, yes, he did, right here. When he said, I and my Father are one, he was claiming equality with the Father. He was claiming to be God with the Father. Uh, and the Jews recognized that. But, you know, it's also true in John chapter 5. Jesus healed a blind man on the or healed a man on the Sabbath day, and so the scribes and Pharisees they said, "You broke the Sabbath," and Jesus said, "My Father worketh hitherto, and I work." 
In other words, my father works up to this point all the time. He's always working. He's always active. And me too. So uh, so do I. I work uh, the same as the father. And in fact, Jesus goes on in John 5, 17 through 23 to say, hey, whatever the father does, I do. And he stressed, you know, I don't work independently of the father. The father and I work together and everything the father does, I do. And then he says that all men should honor the Son, even as they honor the Father. So when he said, my Father worketh hitherto and I work, they said, you, uh, you are a blasphemer because you said that God is your Father, making yourself equal with God. In other words, God is your Father in a unique sense that you are of the same essence as the Father, that you are the Son of God, in the sense that you're of the same essence as the Father. Kind of like Son of Man means human, and Son of God means you are God in the flesh. Uh, so, so Jesus claimed that in John 5, 17 through 23. Then in John chapter 8, verses 56 through 59, Jesus said, You know, my father Abraham rejoiced to see my day, and he saw it. And was glad and the Jewish leader said you're not even 50 years old and you, you're saying that Abraham you, have you seen Abraham and what did Jesus said he said before Abraham was I am no what did he mean by that well one of God's names in the book of Exodus that God revealed himself to Moses Moses said whom shall I say sent me and God said tell them I am hath sent you so Jesus said, I am. Before Abraham was, he didn't say I was. He said, I am. He was claiming to be the I am, the, the name for God, one of the names of God in the Old Testament. They knew what he meant because they took up stones to stone him, and they would have killed him. Now, uh, so, and, and by the way, let me just say this. There's a place in Matthew's Gospel where, deity of Christ deniers like Arians or Jehovah Witnesses or whatever, they'll say Jesus denied that he was God. And there's a place in Matthew's Gospel where a man comes to Jesus and he says, Good Master, what must I do so that I may inherit eternal life? Now Jesus says something to him to make him think about what he's really saying. He said, Why do you call me good? And Jesus said, there is none good but God. You see, Jesus is trying to get this man to think about what real goodness is. And so people look at that and say, look, Jesus was specifically denying that he's God because he said, why do you call me good? There's none good but God. Well, let me ask you this question. Is Jesus good? Is Jesus good? You bet. He is the sinless Son of God. He is the good shepherd that gives his life for the sheep. He's the way, the truth, and the life. He's one with the Father. Yeah, so, so actually Jesus is saying, hey, there's none good but God. And of course Jesus is good, so he's God. But you see, this man who asked that question, that man thought he was good. Jesus said, keep the commandments. If you want to earn eternal life, keep all the commandments, keep them perfectly. And the man says, oh, I've kept all of these from my youth. He did not. But see, a self-righteous person would think, oh, I've kept all these commandments, and I'm a good person, and my own goodness can save me, and they don't realize their need of the righteousness of God, which they lack in themselves, but which God provides for us through Christ and his shed blood on the cross. So, uh, Jesus did in fact claim to be God, and he said other things like, I'm the good shepherd. The good shepherd, that's one of the, the, the names of God in the Old Testament, like the 23rd Psalm, the Lord is my what? Shepherd, right? Not only that, in John 14, Jesus said, let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. Now, if that's not claiming equality with the Father, and then on one instance, Jesus said that the Son of Man 
is Lord of the Sabbath day. That's another claim to uh, deity. Well, in verse 34, Jesus answered them saying, it is, not, is it not written in your law? I said, ye are gods. If he called them gods unto whom the word of God came and the scripture cannot be broken, say ye of him whom the Father has sanctified and sent into the world, thou blasphemest, because I said, I am the Son of God. If I do not the works of my Father, believe me not. But if I do, though ye believe not me, believe the works that ye may know, and believe that the Father is in me and I in him. Now, what was Jesus getting at? And what was his point? Let's go back and look at this. It, Jesus answered them, Is it not written in your law? I said, Ye are gods. What's Christ referring to? Well, if you read Psalm 82, uh, the, the psalmist, I think it's a psalm of Asaph, the psalmist is talking, uh, he's, he's quoting what God is saying. And he's talking to corrupt judges who judge righteously. And he says that above all these corrupt earthly judges, God is the ultimate judge. He sits above the, uh, the gods. And he says, you know, judge righteous judgment. You know, uh, deliver those who are afflicted. And, and uh, you know, don't be partial. Don't be corrupt in your judgments and so forth. And he says, I have said ye are gods, and all you are the children of the Most High but ye shall die as men. See, sometimes the Bible uses the word God or gods with a little g in a figurative sense. Sometimes angels are referred to as Elohim. In other words, a Hebrew name for gods. Uh, and sometimes false gods are referred to as Elohim, gods, with a small g. And sometimes judges in Psalm 82, like figuratively speaking, are referred to as Elohim or gods with a little g because they when they're judging they're sort of taking the place of God like they're sitting in God's stead to execute or carry out the judgment of God so so Jesus point was this hey if the scriptures call earthly judges gods and the scripture can't be broken the scripture isn't wrong um, why are you accusing me of blasphemy? Because I said I'm the Son of God. When you see all the works that I do, the works that prove that I am the Son of God, why, how, uh, you know, if, they, if those earthly judges are called gods with a little g, and I say I'm the Son of God and I'm doing all these works, look at the works that I'm doing. Look how I've raised the dead, feed the multitudes with a, just a little bit of food, and heal the, the blind, give sight to the blind, and hearing to the ear, and I cause the, the lame to walk. And uh, those, you know, signs of the Messiah that the Old Testament mentions. And if you, verse 37, if you don't, if, if I do not the works of my Father, well then don't believe me. But if I do, though ye believe not, if you don't believe what I say, believe the works that I say, that you may know and believe that the Father is in me and I in him. So I am in the Father and the Father is in me. There's this oneness between the Father and the Son, even though they're two distinct persons, yet they are one in essence. <clears throat> and so that was Jesus' point. Hey, uh, when I do these miraculous works that prove my claim to deity, you know, that prove that the Father sent me, Believe me for my work's sake, and look at my works, and once you're convinced, then listen to what I have to say. Look at the evidence that substantiates my claim to be the Son of God. Well, in verses 39 through 42, it says, Therefore they sought again to take him. And it doesn't say to take him and kill him, but presumably that was their intent. But he escaped out of their hand. Now, why did he escape out of their hand? Well, his hour had not yet come. They couldn't kill Jesus unless he allowed it. Remember earlier in the chapter, Jesus said, The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. And he said, uh, I, I came to lay it down. 
And he said, No man taketh it from me. He said, I have the power to lay it down, and I have the power to take it up. So, in one sense, uh, the nails did not hang, G hold Jesus on the cross. In one sense, his love did, because he didn't have to do it. But thank God he did. And in so doing, he made salvation and eternal life available for me and for you and for anyone, whosoever will, who may come, whoever wants to be saved, and they're willing to come to God in repentance of their sin and put their faith in the saving merits of Christ's shed blood and that alone, and receive God's gift of eternal life and believe on the name of the Son of God, uh, he offers everyone who's willing eternal life. Well, then it says, and, and he went again beyond Jordan into the place where John at first baptized, and there are boats. So he was kind of like, you know, withdrawing so that they wouldn't kill him before it was time for the Father's will. Uh, you know, like he, he, Jesus did what he did when it was the Father's will. I mean, if you're going to be the perfect man, which Jesus was, a perfect man would always want to do what God says, right? So he always sought to do the will of the Father. It wasn't time for him to be crucified yet, so he escaped uh, into the wilderness. And by the way, there's nothing wrong with running from martyrdom or running from persecution. And, uh, and so the Father led him to do that. So he stayed there. And it says in verse 41, And many resorted unto him. They came out to hear him, and they said, Hey, John did no miracle. But Jesus, he does miracles. And all things that John spake of this man were true. What kind of things did John speak of him? Well, that he's the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. And uh, he's the Messiah. And, uh, and, and um, so it says, And many believed on him there. Uh, you know, I, I would assume that probably most of the people watching this would be saved. You would be one of Christ's sheep. But if you're not saved, please think about your relationship with God and your eternal destiny. And I would, I would encourage you and beg you to believe on the name of the Son of God. Are you sorry for your sins and your, if you, for your uh, wanting to run your own life, your own way, independently of God? Are you sorry for that and do you want to be right, made right with God? Do you want to receive God's forgiveness and his gift of eternal life? Believe on the name of the Son of God. Come to God and say, Lord, I am sorry for my sins, and I want your forgiveness. I believe Jesus died for me and rose again from the dead. Please forgive me and cleanse me. Make me a new person. Change my heart and grant me the gift of eternal life. And Jesus, come into my heart and life and be my Lord and my Savior. Believing on Jesus brings eternal life, and you will never perish. And following Jesus leads us in the right direction. May God watch over you and keep you and protect you. And may he give you the grace to follow him and walk with him faithfully all the days of your life. May he bless you and keep you. And may he cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. And keep you and guard you in all your ways. God bless you.